Yeah, good day YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again with another video. Today we're going to talk about the Steel USG grinder and we're going to try and simplify it for people who may be thinking of getting one. Now in the last video it was a very comprehensive guide about the USG and all its features but we didn't actually go into setting it up for sharpening. So I'm going to sort of show you how to best set this up and how it works and how it really follows the factory angles. So this is a brand new still RS chain and I always like to keep a brand new one because it acts as a bit of a template and if you look at it there that's what it is. Stills RS. Rapid Super. And for semi chisel and full chisel even for Pico chains, 3.8 low profile, 0 0.325, 3.8 standard, 404. It uses 40 degrees on the head, which is top plate cutting angle. The vice uses minus 15, positive 15. The top plate, which is a C scale, uses 30 degrees left, 30 degrees right. Does that for just about every single chain, except when we get to the tungsten carbide, they're different. And rapid hexa is a little bit different as well. So, and if you look at a steel USG chart, I don't want to get too in, involved into it, but if you were to look over here at 0 0.325, 3.8 standard and 404, and you go over to the far corner, you'll see RS 60 degrees, RM 75, RS 60 degrees, RM75. What that stands for is that's the uh, side plate angle, right? So that's what you're going to get on your side plate. So you grind RS, RM, and even the Pico chains, the quarter inch Pico, there it is there, quarter inch Pico, 3 8 Pico, right? All the same angles, 40 degrees, right? On there. Now, 40 degrees on there is 50 degrees on an Oregon. And a lot of people get confused from an Oregon when they go to a steel USG. What you've got to remember is your vertical reference point on a USG grinder. So if we tilt this head up at horizontal, it'll be zero degrees up at the top, right? So then we're tilting this over 40 degrees. Right, so we're moving 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. On an Oregon grinder, we start at 90 degrees. 90, 80, 70, 60. So we reduce from 90. So even if you were to put this at 30 degrees, you'd go 10, 20, 30. On an Oregon, 90, right? You've got 90, so you've got 80, 70, 60. Exactly the same thing, except... The steel tilts to the left, the Oregon tilts to the right. The Oregon you feed the chain in from this side, the steel you feed it in from the other side. So there's a few things that are different, right? And that's, just want to clear that up because a lot of people actually get that wrong. You don't have to worry about the 10 degrees downward tilt on the steel USG because all the angles are built into the grinder. And what I mean by that, if you look at the previous video, you've got offset grinding on the A scale. So this is the A scale at the back, the tiltable head. It's offset. This scale here, the C scale, is offset by 17 millimeters. And what I mean by that is, this is the pivot point right here, right? This pivot point, we'll zoom in, we'll show you this. Because this is fairly important, so that you've got a, a much clearer understanding if you've got a USG grinder or thinking of getting one, I'll only briefly touch on this point because I touched on it quite a lot in the previous video. By offset grinding, this is a pivot point where that black line is. So that's, that's where it pivots. But the tooth extends out 17 millimetres. The front of the tooth is out here and it pivots here. By moving this, you can see that it moves quite a lot. It moves across the face of the grinding wheel, which is offset grinding. 
On an Oregon grinder, you'll find out that the tooth only goes about one or two millimeters past the pivot point, so it doesn't move that much. If you look at the back of that rivet, it won't move that much across. It doesn't move that much, but compared to the tooth, the tooth moves a huge amount across the face of the wheel. And that's why you've got minus 15 and positive 15 on the slidable vice so that it brings this tooth just slightly away from the centre line of the grinding wheel. It's still offset grinding. And it will maintain all the cutting angles perfectly. So don't compare this to your Oregon grinder or your Tacomic. Totally different offset grinding. A lot of lays, milling machines, offset grinding... Is, is not something that's new, but it's something that is incorporated in the steel USG grinder, and you end up with the perfect uh, geometry. Okay, so we've set this up. A scale is 40 degrees, right? We're doing a left-hand tooth that's closest to the operator, so we push the B scale back to minus so it goes back in that direction. When we bring the grinding wheel down, it fits like a hand in a glove. So this is a brand new still RS chain. And I like to use it as a template. And the 30 degree top plate angle is in perfect alignment with the wheel. And it's only a few millimeters. The tooth is only a few millimeters off the center line. Just a few millimetres of offset grinding. There's a little bit of tilt built into it, but there's no mention of it. Because when we talk about the 10 degrees downward tilt, that was something that was incorporated many, many years ago. Over 40, 50 years ago, people were using 10 degrees downward tilt. And still just don't talk about it. As far as still are concerned, it's, it's a no-brainer. They incorporate everything into the geometry of the tooth, at the factory, if you've got a steel USG grinder, you've got your A scale, it's offset by three degrees, and you've got this, it's offset by 17 millimeters, and this changes everything but brings the tooth into the correct geometry, right? That's the difference between a steel USG grinder. That's also the difference between a professional grinder and a cheap grinder. This is a very expensive grinder. It's around about $1,240 in Australian dollars. It's a precision grinder. USG stands for Universal Sharpening Grinder. So it does hedge trimmers as well as circular saws. So if you've got semi-chisel or full chisel, whether it's in 3.8 low profile, whether it's in 0.325, whether it's in 3.8, whether it's in 4.04, the only difference then is that, well, there virtually is no difference. Full chisel and semi-chisel have exactly the same settings. 40 degrees on A scale, plus and minus 15 degrees on the B scale, 30 degrees left and right on the C scale. There is no difference between sharpening full chisel and semi-chisel. On an Oregon grinder, it's different. Some chains call for 10 degrees downward tilt. I don't want to talk about 10 degrees downward tilt because everything is incorporated into this grinder. The right geometry is put in there. The only thing that I will say, if you're doing uh, Stills Hexa, the vice, uh, the top or the A scale, the top plate cutting angle, is 25 degrees. So it's totally different, right? The B scale is set at zero, and the top plate uh, angle, the C scale, is also set at 25 degrees. So it's totally different setup than anything else that you may be getting used to. And when I first got the steel USG grinder, even for a couple of years, I was still confused about the 10 degrees downward tilt because there is no information about the geometry about the usg grinder officially from still to the public it's just not there the 10 degrees downward tilt still just don't mention it it's all incorporated the correct angles are incorporated into this grinder the same angles the same settings 
are exactly the same for full chisel and semi chisel. And what still do is make it optimal performance for both semi chisel and full chisel, right? So there is no difference in changing the angles. I just wanted to stress that. So the next thing is that when you do set it up with the backstop here, you make sure that when you adjust the knob, and we'll just zoom back out, that you bring it up to the face of the grinding wheel so that it just touches, right, like that. It's just touching. That's your starting position where you start to grind, right? If you feel that it's not taking enough material off, then you just adjust it and give it a little bit more. You should be, uh, if your chain is slightly dull, not damaged, just slightly dull, you should be taking between 0.1 and 0.2 of a millimetre off every time you sharpen it. There's no reason for you to take half a millimetre off unless it's damaged. A brand new tooth is approximately 10 millimetres from one end to the other end, but because of the end of life mark, you've only got about 7 millimetres of usable tooth. So only take off the minimal amount of uh, metal that is required. There's no point you playing around with all the angles and thinking that you're going to reinvent the wheel. The people that developed this grinder, and it goes back to even probably early 70s, maybe late 60s when they made this grinder, it's been around for a long time and virtually nothing's changed on it, right? So all the angles. The angles are a little bit different, uh, even if you have a look at Stills Topic. That's a, that still Topic. There was RS back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. And uh, right, right up, right? So there was a lot of technology happening around the 80s and the 90s. And today, Stills RS and RS Pro is the fastest cutting chain in Stills range, except for square ground, which is the king of all grinding. So just to briefly retouch on some of the angles, if you look at Rapid Super, it's 40 degrees, uh, on the uh, A scale, and it's 30 degrees on the C scale, and on the B scale, plus and minus 15. So plus and minus 15, and 40 degrees and 30 degrees is on every single chain, which is Rapid Super, Rapid Micro. If you have Stills RMX chain, which is Ripping Saw chain, it'll be 40 degrees, so that doesn't change, but the C scale is 10 degrees. If you've got Stills RCX ripping chain, 40 degrees, and the same thing, the positive and minus on the B scale, and 10 degrees on the C scale. If you've got Stills RMH, that's harvester chain, that's 40 degrees on the A scale, 10 and 15, uh, sorry, uh, 15 and 15 on the uh, B scale, and 30 degrees on the uh, C scale. Rapid Duro, that's tungsten carbide, uh, Rapid Duro Rescue, that's 10 degrees on the, uh, they only use 10 degrees on the, uh, 10 and 15 degrees on that one, so that's totally different angles on that, but you'll see that on your USG chart. Uh, I don't want to talk much about the USG chart because I've, I've done that over and over again. The reason I didn't incorporate some of this information in the last video, the last video went for half an hour. This has already gone for 13 minutes. And all as I was really wanted to touch up on here was the angles that are on the USG chart. And if I was to put an RS chain on here, so we just take this off, all right? And sorry, not an RS, RM chain. With a lot of other chains, you get used to saying semi-chisel, full chisel. With still, it's RS or RM. So I'm sort of trying to get used to saying RS and RM. Okay. So the only difference, if we zoom right in on the uh, semi-chisel, you've got that beautiful rounded corner on there. The same settings. It just doesn't matter whether you use semi-chisel or full chisel, right? It's the same settings for both. That's what I wanted to emphasize on that. Right? So that's your stills. Most beautiful chain. 
The difference between your semi chisel and your full chisel or RS is approximately around 10%, give or take a percent, but approximately around 10%. And this is a brand new chain, this is Stills RS. And that's the profile with that little nice sharp point. Now, no matter how good you sharpen the chain, if you go to all the trouble and effort to sharpen the chain, you should make sure that you check your rakers. Now, still have two gauges to check rakers. Got this one here with the cutout windows. The windows on top of the gauge is you place this on top of the tooth and you can look down vertical and see the angle of the top plate. That's this here. 30 degrees is what still use. I don't use 25 or 35. They use 10 degrees, you've got 10 degrees here, there for milling chains. And on the side here, we can check our side plate angles. So we've got 60 degrees for our RS and 75 degrees for our semi-chisel, which is RM. So that's quite useful for that. But when I check my rakers, I like to use the still progressive depth gauge. This is much more superior. It is chain specific, and as you can see, I stamped on there 3.8. It's hardened metal. I nearly ruined me punches stamping it, but it's hardened metal. You can run the file over that. You won't damage it. That's been, this is years old, and I just run the file over the top. You look at all the scratches on the back. You've got hard and soft setting, hard up the top, uh, hardwood and softwood on the bottom. When you use the gauge from brand new, the distance between the raker and the distance between the, uh, we'll just grab a tooth and show you that. So the distance between here and here on a brand new chain is 0.65 of a millimetre. But by the time the tooth wears down to here, the distance between here and here is about 1.2 millimetres using a progressive depth gauge. But if you use the standard flat gauge, constant gauge like this, you'll only ever maintain a height differential of 0.65 of a millimetre. So do yourself a favour, next time you go on your steel dealer, get a progressive depth gauge, they're chain specific for the pitch, right? So whatever pitch that you've got, uh, but you have to get one for 3.8 low profile, so you can't use the same one for 3.8 low profile, 3.8 standard, because of the height differential on the actual raker. Look, I hope that information helps. It's just a little bit of a brief uh, overview about the Steel USG grinder and how to use it. If you're looking for a different overview and a more technical explanation of the offsets, we go into more in-depth there about what offset grinding angles are, uh, look at that. So you could virtually say this would be part two, part one, is really a technical video on the steel USG grinder. This is more of a user operator technical guide in the right direction. Just remember, stills semi chisel and full chisel is the same setting. And that would probably, if I was sharpening any of the Carlton chains or the Oregon chains, I would still be using the same settings on here. I hope that information helps. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.